conceptual people talk about it all of the elements sexual experience and I wanted to talk about that uh, I've also shared a link of a an old article I wrote I believe all the way back in 2014 2015 that's all of a sudden again getting some uh, some exposure and people are commenting on it and so I updated it added a couple of elements and reshared it uh, but I wanted to just really, really talk about this because there are different uh, components and elements involved in my position. And I want to be clear on this. I'm not going to take a whole lot of your time. When I speak on these topics of feminizing the black male image, of marginalizing the black power of black masculinity, when I deal with these issues, my focus isn't specifically on homosexuality, although I've made my stance uh, against homosexuality very clear. Uh, this is not what my focus is on. My focus is on, uh, I can get past what you're doing in your bedroom. I can get past what, who you choose to do it with. My problem, you know, I want to be very clear about this. While I made my stand and I made it clear on what I feel about homosexuality, I also want to be very clear that when I talk and I speak on this, I'm speaking about specifically the marginalization and the depreciation of black masculinity, how there is a precise focus on attacking the masculinity of black men, which has a massive impact on the ability of black men to step into their design role. Uh, you can have as many friends as you want to that uh, champion and move and live and operate within the LGBTQ uh, reality. And I have my family members and I love them to death and we don't hardly ever talk, that's my point. We don't talk about their sexuality. They understand my my, my stance on it, uh, but they also understand that I love them and I love them unconditionally. I would never disown my children based off of a choice. I would be disappointed, but I would love my children nonetheless. That's that's not something I would tell anybody. We already have our children living and, and trying to live up to some heavy, heavy, heavy stuff uh, that we haven't thought through and we haven't prepared them for. It's good to give them high expectations. It's good to point them in, in the direction of extraordinary, phenomenal and, and, and greatness. It's all great, but you got to prepare them for that. You got to give them something from which they can build and stretch out and reach and stand and climb. And so sitting up and putting another thing of pressure. Well, if you make this decision, you're no longer my, my, my son or my daughter. It's just something I refuse to do. I'm going to love my kids regardless. Uh, I'm going to stand on my values. I'm not going to be swayed on them. I'm not going to be tentative in speaking about it. I am going to be very direct and frank, but I'm going to do it from a position of love. I'm going to do it from a place of really truly caring about the people I'm trying to impact. And so that means that when you love somebody, you got to be able to sit up and say, okay, I love you and be willing to accept the fact that what you're trying to get them to do or understand, they may not get and they may not understand it. And so you've got to be prepared for that. It's that simple. Um, and still be willing to love them. 
of. But on the note of this whole attack on black masculinity, we've got to see it for what it is. We've got to be able to recognize it. And we've got to be strong enough as leaders in our communities, as activists in our communities to stand up and be willing to move against what is considered uh, politically correct. We've got to be willing to stand in a place of diametric opposition to that which ruins and negatively impacts the collective. This isn't about personal choice. This is about socialization. This is about the ability of black men to take on certain roles. And while we will laugh at, and, you know, our women will befriend the feminized version of our men, they will not follow them. They will not submit to their leadership. They will not seek them for protective covering. It, you, if we don't protect our ability to create a warrior class of men, we will never ever have the respect that we need because a great deal of respect in this place of conflict comes from the fear of what can happen to you when you violate the code of respect. If there are no men to punish violations against our people, against our women, against our children, there will be no fear of doing it. We have to have a warrior class of men. That class of men has to be clearly masculine in the expression of who they are and what they intend on doing. That has to be protected at all costs. So when I talk about this, that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the fact that we already have 1.5 million men missing in the black community. So we cannot afford to lose anymore. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Talk about it, all of the elements.